Welcome back elementary staff. I'm Sarah Farner. If you don't know me, I'm the director of elementary curriculum. A lot has gone on over the course of the summer. We've had some great trainings from Teachers College and we had a great math training at Fox School District and we've had a lot of curriculum changes. So this video is just a quick update of what is new um, and what is changing for the school year. So to start off, we've had some new uh, staff that have joined us. So we have Patrice Howard. She is our new assistant in the curriculum office. Patrice will be the one that you will contact for any curriculum assessment or professional development question. Um, so reach out to her first. If she is not the right person to answer your question, she would be glad to help you find the right person who can help you. And we also have some other new faces in the curriculum department. Hi, my name is Andrew Kuhnert and I am the coordinator of data and assessment here in Melville School District. If I look familiar, it's because I have uh, did teach at Berkeley Middle School for several years and recently finished uh, several years as the assistant principal at Washington Middle. In my new role, I'm going to be helping with uh, data reports and also assessment uploads. So I'll be overseeing Mastery Connect this year. Over the summer, we met with Mastery Connect support and work through some of the glitches that you may have experienced last year when you're administering the district benchmarks. In addition, we revised some of those benchmarks to updated curriculums and uh, improved questioning. The assessment window opens up on August 16th. So this year, science and math in K through 5 and also reading in 3 through 5 grades will be doing benchmarks this year. So please look for some information coming out to, from me about updates in terms of uh, best practices when it comes to Mastery Connect and feel free to get in contact with me uh, or through your teacher leaders or principals when it comes to support with that application. Hello elementary teachers, I'm Lindsay Roy. I'm the STEM coordinator for the Melville School District. This will be my first year out of the classroom. I was a seventh grade science teacher and before that a seventh grade math teacher. Um, I will be overseeing K-12 science and math curriculum for the district, PLTW courses in the middle school and high school, as well as integrating STEM curriculum in the classrooms. I have a few updates for you in regards to elementary science and math. As Sarah pointed out, the Google folder with curriculum resources has been updated with the new science information. Keep in mind that even as we teach with a new product, our guiding focus for implementation will be the BYOC curriculum documents. The folder also contains standards-based grading report cards for each grade level with 3-2-1 statements that help determine mastery of standards. There are two versions of the report card, one that has parent-friendly wording and one that has standard-specific language for teachers. MySci, our new science product, provides kits of materials with which to teach their lessons. The first kit delivery was on August 1st. If anything is broken, damaged, or missing, please contact Keith May at MySci directly at kmay at wustl.edu. All kits should be returned to the school office for pickup on the date requested. Any unused MySci materials, including unused consumables, should be returned in the kits for restocking. All paper resources, lesson plans, and digital resources can be accessed online at the website mysciepartners.com. Scroll down to the Melville School District and click Access Units. The password for all teachers is Melville School dollar sign. The print shop has been working diligently preparing materials that were sent over for printing. Just as a reminder, when possible, please use the online DNT portal for print requests or be as detailed as you can when sending email requests. The Google folder also contains elementary math information. This is the same information that you've been working with. However, elementary math is up for revision this year. We will be forming a math curriculum committee to realign our scope, sequence, and learning targets with the Missouri Learning Standards. We'll also determine appropriate textbook materials to use with this realignment. Thank you to those teachers who have signed up already to lead this important work. As a final note, I'll be going on maternity leave in sometime in mid-October and returning at the start of second semester. While I'm gone, please direct your questions to Sarah Farner and she will definitely take care of your problems or any questions that might come up. I look forward to working with you all. So Lindsay mentioned the 1718 Google folder that I shared and I wanted to highlight what's in that folder and walk you through some of those documents. At the beginning of August, I shared with all elementary staff a Google folder that's titled 1718 Elementary Curriculum and Assessment Resources. If you have not already done so, please take this folder and add it to your drive so that way it is easily accessible throughout the year. This will be the folder that contains anything that falls under elementary curriculum and assessment. As you see here within the folder, um, there's a subject for the core courses, ELA, math, science, social studies. There is some PE stuff 
um, a folder for professional development and school day expectations. Within these folders you will see what you have seen in the past with um, the BYOC scope and sequence documents. You'll see assessments, report cards, rubrics. Some grade levels and some subject areas have grade books if they were created in the past or if teachers have created them and shared them with me. And other miscellaneous resources are embedded within there as well. I'm going to highlight items in the ELA folder as there have been some updates for next year. The ELA curriculum committee met last spring and over the course of the summer and they were charged with three main tasks. They were to determine a scope and sequence and revise the units of study. They revisited the power standards and then they also created benchmark assessments for third, fourth, and fifth grade in reading. For the scope and sequence and units of study, you will find that information in the folder that says BYOC and scope and sequence. Within a grade level, I'm just going to go to third grade here, you will see two documents in the folder. One document is a Google Doc that has the scope and sequence for the entire year on it. When you look at this, you will notice a couple things. The first thing you will notice is that there is a comment that says no unit should exceed six weeks. This is a suggestion from the Teachers College as the units of study were written to expose students to a variety of skills that they can use across the year and across their life um, and that one session should only be one session. Because each unit will not exceed six weeks, the committee supplemented some units of study with a new unit that was purchased for their grade level or with an if-then unit of study. Some grade levels selected if-then units from the resource that was purchased through the Teachers College, so the if-then curriculum. The units that were selected have learning targets that come with them. These are suggested learning targets and teachers need to use their assessment data to select which learning targets they need to teach their kids. If your grade level had a poetry or fables and folk tales unit that was written last year, we kept those in there as well. The other document in the folder is the BYOC curriculum handout. When you click on this, you will see the entire curriculum, which outlines the units, the order of the units, as well as the learning targets that go with those units. The curriculum committees looked at our past units when they revised them over the summer, and there were just a couple skills that needed to be supplemented, and these are marked with a star next to those learning targets. In addition, you will see that each unit of study has ongoing skills. These skills are standards that we do not want to lose sight of as we're teaching the unit of study. In addition, in the lower grades, they may have an interactive writing, shared reading, or read aloud unit of study that will be addressed over the course of the year. The other task the curriculum committee tackled over the summer was revising the report card and rubrics for standards-based grading. You can see your specific grade level and report card and rubric within the Google folder that I shared with you. I'm going to highlight just a couple of the changes that affect most grade levels. K-5, the committee decided to remove the speaking and listening standards. For kindergarten and first grades, we are still reporting sight words, but we decided to use the sight word list that comes with Teachers College. So that list of words has changed, and there is the list of words as well as flashcards in the assessment folder. For reading level, we decided that the reading level for each student will re be reported K-5 to parents. However, with this, we have decided that we're going to implement what is called a soft cap for reading levels when it comes to instruction and assessment. This soft cap will be the end of year reading level for the grade above your grade. So for kindergarten, there will be a soft cap of J. First grade, there will be a soft cap of M. Second grade will be level P. Third grade, level S. Fourth grade, level V. And fifth grade, level Y. The reason we decided to implement a soft cap this year is for a couple reasons. One, students are typically not socially or emotionally ready for content and books above that soft cap level. Second, when there is a soft cap, we focus more on falling in love with series and books and characters and authors versus focusing on leveling up to the next level. And lastly, especially in the upper grades, 
When students are holding meaning across multiple pages of a text, like a chapter book versus a one-page article, we want to teach students to tackle that text complexity and to think critically and analytically over the course of the text. So we want to be able to spend more time in a grade level band and then the grade above your grade level so that way you can read those books extensively and have practice with all those comprehension skills. In addition, there were some reading standards that we removed and or combined in some grade levels. Also check out your writing standards because the committee decided to focus more on the structure and development of writing than the mechanics of writing. So check out what those changes are as well. Other pieces with ELA involve the school day expectations. I wanted to let everyone know that this was updated to reflect the new components that we're going to be implementing this year, like word study, read aloud, shared reading, as well as reading workshop and writing workshop. And all of these times align with what Teachers College suggest for each of those balanced literacy components. And just a reminder, with those components, word study, read aloud, shared reading, the coaches, Mary Bayer and Kathy Steiner, and I will be hosting some professional development sessions for all teachers on all three of those components. Each teacher will be able to self-assess and decide what type of training they need and they will be able to attend the one that meets their needs. More information will come out on these professional development trainings in the near future. The last thing I want to update teachers on is in regards to progress reports. There was a committee that met in the spring last year and reviewed the feedback from all district teachers and we made some changes for the upcoming school year. Here are some of the highlights. The form will have all three terms on it, which means you will not have to copy the progress report at term two and then term three. Each teacher will only have one Google spreadsheet, which will have a tab for each student. All teachers' progress reports will be kept in one Google folder for the school. There will be a timeline for when to complete each step to ensure it is going to be a smooth process. And then the printing of the progress reports will be more streamlined as well. More specific information will come out on this in the near future. If you have any questions about any of the changes or the updates for this coming school year, feel free to contact myself, Andrew Kuhnert, Patrice Howard, or Lindsay Roy, and we will be glad to answer any of your questions. We hope you all have a great start to the school year.